Tahia Carioca is among the most important figures in the story of Egyptian cinema. With over 200 productions under her belt, she wasn't just an exceptional dancer. Tahia was also a skilled actress, having participated in films, series, and plays of various genres, playing surprisingly different roles. <laughs> However, behind her tempting smile and star status was a first woman deeply involved in the Egypt's political affairs, both before and after the 1952 revolution. Tahia Carioca was born Badawiya Mohammed Ali El Nedani Karim in 1915 in the Egyptian city of El Ismailia, daughter of Mohammed and Fatma. Her father was a boat merchant who married six times. At age 60, he married her mother who was only in her early 20s. When her father died, she was very impacted and could barely speak. She was sent to live with her old half-brother Ahmed. As a child, she showed talent for acting and dancing, but her brother, who was deeply opposed to her dance, would, in the name of his reputation and family honor, repeatedly beat her. While living with him, she was treated like a slave and chained. Every time she tried to escape, he found her and tortured her even more, until one day he shaved her hair to prevent her to leave the home. Reaching the age of 13, she couldn't take it anymore and with the help of her nephew Osman, fled to Cairo to be with Suad Mahassan, who was known to her brother. Mahassan was, at the time, a famous Syrian singer and dancer based in Egypt. Tahiya asked for a job at Suad's nightclub, but she refused to employ her due to the bad reputation she would get for working there. However, many of Suad's friends got to know Tahiya through visits to her home. They all advised Suad to put her in one of her shows as a chorus girl, but she refused. After some time, she relented and made her an extra in one of her plays following the advice of the actor Bishara Joaquin. Tahiya studied at Ivanova Dance School before moving to Mohammed Ali Street, which was Cairo's equivalent of Broadway. When Mahassan was forced to return to Syria with her husband, she left Badawiya in the capable hands of her friend, Badia Masabni. Masabni was a Syrian-Lebanese singer and dancer. Her casino was in the heart of Cairo. Kings and princes from all around the world, including King Farouk of Egypt, flocked to the Badia Casino to hear the latest music and watch the best dancers. The name Tahiya was given to her by Badia, while her artistic last name was bestowed by her audience, who witnessed her perfect interpretation of the world-famous Carioca dance. Carioca is the name of a song and dance from 1933 that appeared in the movie Flying Down to Rio with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, and that gained worldwide attention. Choreographer Isaac Dixon, who worked at Badia's Casino, suggested 
this style for a solo by Tahedia. She asked her percussionist, Zaki, to play a similar beat on his tabla and thus introduced Latin rhythms in her show. From then on, she became known as Tahedia Carioca. But she is also known for her loyalty to authentic Oriental music and dance. Her curvy body, deeply sensual gaze, and the rhythmic sway of her hips have attracted the attention of the Egyptian public for decades. Competition at Badia Casino was tough, especially against Samia Gamel, who also danced there early in her career, but her style was totally different from her professional rival. Tahia rose to fame in 1940, five years after joining Badia's dance troupe. However, this cost her dearly. Her sister, Fatma, was married to Ali El Gedawi, who divorced her when Tahia rose to fame. He refused to remain married to a woman whose sister had such a dishonorable profession. After the divorce, Fatma left her daughter, Raga El Gedawi, with Tahia in Cairo. During this time, Egypt was suffering under the weight of British colonialism and the world wars. However, Tahia would go on stage at night as usual, just as an excuse to drive her car after her performance, loaded with a trunk full of weapons to the Ismailia city where the volunteer soldiers would be camped to fight the British. Another famous pre-independence anecdote is that Tahia secretly helped then officer Anwar El Sadat hide from British soldiers. It was also in 1952, during the Free Officers Movement, to overthrow the monarchy that she married officer Mustafa Kamal Sethi. However, he left the group disapproving of the intention of a coup d'etat. Together, Sethi and Carioca secretly distribute flyers inciting the masses to revolt against the free officers. When the government discovered the pamphlets, and her secret marriage, they arrested her, and it was only her first time in prison in 52. It was during this time that Tahia uttered one of her many famous phrases, Farouk is gone, and many Farouks arrived in his place. Left-wing activist Naila Kamel said she was one of the figures who most impressed her during her five years in prison. She said, When Tahia walked in, the entire prison rose to its feet. Political prisoners of all ranks, through the day, tried to pass by her cell or glimpse her presence from far. Officials and even the prison director himself went to her in the cell in the name of peace, welcoming her, offering their services and tending to her needs. Tahiya used her privilege to protect the prisoners from the inhuman conditions they were forced to live in. She made headlines when she led a hunger strike inside the prison, demanding basic human rights for
for female prisoners. They maintained the strike until a human rights commission visited the prison and its director was replaced. After her first stint in prison, Tahia would often open her home to former prisoners as they recovered from seclusion. She got over her multiple prison stints and let her political work seep into her acting chops. She has been in films and plays filled with political satire and social commentary, especially in her later years on stage and TV. Before we delve into Tahia's Carioca success as an actress and high society dame, let's go back to her dancing talent. It was generally agreed in the artistic world that Tahia has refined the dance of Egypt to a level never achieved before, to the point that dance started to be compared to the arts admired by high society. She was known to have commented that in ancient Egypt dancing was a form of worship of the gods. It's impossible to list the names of the hundreds of dancers who learned directly or indirectly from her fantastic style. Tahia used to host both official national celebrations and private royal parts. As she was fluent in both English and French, she was able to maintain her position among foreign state leaders, aided by her extensive library, which she often consulted to become the cultured and eloquent artist that she was. Director Togo Mizrahi was the first to cast her in a film, Dr. Farahat. In 37, she appeared in What El Citar, Behind the Curtain, directed by Kamal Selim. Soon, Tahia became a familiar face as an oriental dancer to the point where she appeared in seven movies by 42, most of them directed by Togo Mizrahi. However, she worried about being treated only as a belly dancer, as she saw herself as a talent movie star, especially after the success in the role that Togo Mizrahi gave her in Leila Bint el Rif, Leila, the country girl. Tahia decided to produce films to become a recognized actress she created together with actor Hussein Said E and the director Hussein Fauzi, a production company they called Shirket El Shabab, Company of Youth. They produced a Hebel Ghalat, which marked his first leading role. Despite the success of this film, which was followed by other films, Tahia still needed a spectacular success that would prove her talent. This was achieved in The Concealment Cap, directed by Niazi Mustafa. Baby, 
with the end of the Second World War, musical comedies began to flourish in the hands of Hussein Fauzi, Ahmed Badrakhan, and Helmi Rafla. Tahia was able to constantly insert herself into the commercial formula of this type of film, like her competitors Samia Gemel and Naima Akif. Both limited their work to one person. Samia Gemel was almost always present with Farid El Atrash, while Naima Akif appeared in the films of her husband, director Hissein Fauzi. Tahi stood out from them for collaborating with everyone, be it actors, producers or directors. She regularly appeared in films with well-known singers such as Mohamed Fauzi, Karim Mahmoud, Abdelaziz Mahmoud and also Farid El Atrash. Tahiria has always maintained a good reputation among the public, partly because she doesn't dance in well-known nightclubs, unlike Huria Mohamed, Beba Ezzedin, and Hekmet Fahmi. Most of her dance numbers have been performed during local or international tours. She was also not interested in acquiring the title of palace dancer like Thuraya Salem. Even her ambiguous relationship with King Farouk was on a surprising equal footing. Tahia was smart enough to keep up with the changing tastes of the public starting out as one of the stars of musical comedies which were prevalent during the 40s and 50s, she switched to social dramas in which she was prominent to family comedies in the 60s. Tahia didn't mind playing good supporting roles alongside leading roles. She did this with Leila Murad in Shat El Gharam, with Aziz Amir in Ismail Nasib, with Faten Hamama in Ibn El Halal, and with Magda in Shat El Asrar. Tahiya has been married 14 times. Her list of husbands include Rush de Abbas, one of the stories is that Tahiya taught Rushdi how to smuggle weapons and thus perform his first act of political resistance against British colonialism. Unfortunately, on a trip to Lebanon, Tahiya caught Rushdi's involvement with a French woman in a bar on Alhamra Street in Beirut. An epic fight ensued, where Tahia dragged the woman by her hair and demanded a divorce. It's true that she went through several fate marriages. and even with an American army officer who took her to the United States. Appearing in 22 movies by 1946 was enough to stamp Tahia's image in viewers' minds. So when she returned to Egypt after the divorce, she appeared in six films in a row and then 28 more over the next four years. Tahia was a very determined woman, which made her successful in the tough world of belly dancing, in addition to being a great dancer, no doubt. But no one has ever come close to her impressive virtuosity in wordplay, gestures and ironic flirtation. 
Tahia became an idol for Russians, Americans, Germans, Ukrainians, Italians, Armenians, Dutch and French. Everyone was drawn to Tahia's artistic mastery and she proved to be a source of inspiration for a whole new generation of dancers. She has been awarded many times in the film industry as well as in theater and by the government of Egypt. But the best prize she received was the love and respect of her loving audience around the world. As a woman, she broke many barriers, took up a severely despised profession, raised her niece alone, and had all her money taken by force by her last husband. She later turned to Orthodox Islam, a return that more dancers made in old age. A personal and sad touch about Tahiria's life is the fact that, despite her many marriages, she was unable to become a mother, something that saddened her until her last days. But this has led her to being completely involved with the children of her brothers and the rest of the family, as well as helping and maintaining several orphanages, shelters and children's charities. At the end of her life, she adopted a baby girl, a Tietala, gift from God. Tahiya died on September 20th, in 1999, at the age of 79, from a heart attack. Fifi Abdu took it upon herself to raise a tiet along with her daughters. Every Oriental dancer must express life, death, happiness, sadness, love and hate, but above all, she must have dignity. Thank you.